Well, Congress passing nearly $14 billion in aid for Ukraine as part of a larger $1.5 trillion spending bill. Joining me now is Michigan Representative Lisa McLean. Lisa, great to have you with us. We appreciate it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the overall response. Obviously, we saw huge bipartisan support for this spending bill, given the fact that it had $13.6 billion in aid for Ukraine. But we're hearing more calls in both the House and the Senate to do more. Uh, GOP senators, 40 GOP senators, sent a letter to President Biden urging him to tr transfer aircraft to Ukraine, what more does Congress need to do to push this administration to bolster Ukraine defensively and hit harder on Russia? You know, you have to hit Russia where it hurts, and that is economically. So I think we did part of the sanctions, which was very good, where we shut off oil. That's, that's good. But now what we need to do is we need to turn on the American oil. And we need to do that so we can begin to not only supply Americans at, with oil at a cheaper price um, and become energy independent, but also we need to be able to help Europe and make Europe less dependent on Russian oil. Sanctions is the absolute best way to deal with it because you need two things to fight a war. Number one, you need people. And number two, you need money. So we have got to hit them where it hurts. And I think that's more and stronger and stiffer economic sanctions. I'm glad you brought up the energy issue, Congresswoman, because everybody said this was a first step to ban Russian oil. But the second part of that, you have in the Senate Democratic Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia saying that the Biden administration should invoke the Defense Production Act to basically complete a natural gas pipeline. He's talking about the 300-mile uh, Mountain Valley pipeline that stretches through his state and Virginia um, that would, would meet a lot of, of course, U.S. demand and would also decrease the EU's dependence here. Is that something you would support? It, um, I, I would say I'd need to see the bill, but on the surface, it sounds um, it sounds like a very good idea. Look, we need to get America to be back to energy independent. And what I want to say to the progressive liberals who are anti-American is, listen, we all want to do what's best for for the planet, and we all want to be conscientious of our environment. But we are not producing less volumes of oil, and, the, and, and people are not consuming less. The difference is we are not producing the oil. We are, ex, we are excuse me, importing the oil from terrorist nations. So, so I would ask the, the progressive liberals a, a couple things. One, who do you think has better regulation on oil production, America or Russia? Iran, Venezuela, or Saudi, or Saudi, or, or the Saudis. I think we have better regulations. Number two, why would we fund our adversaries when we can drill oil here in America? If we begin to import Iranian oil, where do you think the Iranians are going to use that, that money for? Yeah. Perhaps a nuclear bomb? Why would we do that in nuclear weapons? Why would we fund our adversaries? Let's drill and let's produce oil here in America where it's safer and it benefits the American people. Yeah, Congresswoman McLean, we certainly saw a lot of backlash against the discussions that the Biden administration, as you mentioned, has been having with Iran, uh, Venezuela. And this is something that uh, particularly we've heard multiple, multiple bipartisan lawmakers saying that, you know, it's really quite simple. Why aren't we producing it here? Um, I want to ask you really quickly, just looking ahead to the midterm elections, we certainly saw that a lot of rank and file Democrats were blindsided by the COVID-19 relief in this bill, that uh, there were going to be offsets to that funding. That actually took a lot longer for the House to pass that $1.5 trillion spending bill because of this. The Democrats went on their retreat, albeit delayed because of this division that we're, we've been seeing. In terms of 
Republicans plan going into November? Where do you plan to address inflation, which the Biden administration has largely blamed on Putin, the rising gas prices? What are your pledges to help fix this? First and foremost, we have got to get our spending under control. You know, infl inflation is too many dollars chasing ch too few goods. So we can't, it, we can't inject more money into the economy. That's only going to cause inflation to rise again. But first and foremost, we have got to tighten our belts. There's a difference between wants and needs. And we truly have to take a look at our spending. That is... Number one, we, we are spending these dollars on the backs of our children and our grandchildren. And, and look, we just passed another $1.5 trillion. It, the spending is out of control. At some point in time, it's going to come crashing down, and it will hurt everyone. Yeah. A great point. Um, that is certainly something that we, we heard quite a bit about when we heard the objections to about $8 billion worth of earmarks that Democrats had put in that bill. Uh, Congresswoman, we appreciate you being with us. Thanks for spending a portion of your Saturday here with Newsmax. Always a pleasure. Have a great, great. day. Thank you.